Pontiac? Here. Alderman Toman is excused. Alderman Gale? Here. Guzikowski? Here. Everybody, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. And tonight we're joined by the Oak Creek Robotics team. Would you all please start us off in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of minutes of 10, 16, 18. Everybody would take a look. If there are no omissions, errors, or corrections, questions, we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Kalski would make a motion to approve the minutes of 10, 16, 18. Lorick will second. Roll call. Alderman Lorick. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Gale. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Abstains. Item four is a council proclamation uh, to Tina Kadick for her service as celebrations commissioner. Catherine? Council proclamation number 18-14 to Tina Koenig for dedicated service to the city of Oak Creek as a member of the Celebration, Celebrations Commission. Whereas Tina Koenig was appointed to the Celebrations Commission in August 2008 and has served for 10 years. And whereas Tina Koenig has resigned from the Celebrations Commission effective September 2018. And whereas Tina Koenig took the reins and organized the yearly pig and chicken roast and coordinated the first Giving Tree events with the Family Life Center. And whereas Tina Koenig was also instrumental in the yearly summer solstice, 4th of July celebration, and the annual holiday tree lighting. And whereas Tina Koenig has served the city in a thorough, conscientious, and professional manner. Now therefore be it resolved that the mayor and common council of the city of Oak Creek do hereby show their appreciation and gratitude to Tina Koenig, for her dedicated service to the City of Oak Creek as a member of the Celebrations Commission. Be it further resolved that this proclamation be spread upon the minutes of this meeting and that the City Clerk be and she is hereby directed to transmit a suitable copy thereof to Tina Koenig, introduced and adopted this 5th day of November 2018. Thank you, Catherine. Um, anybody like to say a few words on Yeah, Kim? absolutely, uh, Mayor Dan. Uh, Rich Dukniak, 3rd District. Certainly, I begin by just extending my thanks to Tina for her work with city celebrations for the past 10 years. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Tina at the Oak Creek Community Center for just over 17 years. She truly is, she is a treasure to our community. Her dedication to not only city but community programs is or, or was and is still significant. Uh, although Tina is no longer with city celebrations, she continues to be an active part of programs that are important to our great city. Tina, not here tonight. I hope you're watching at home. But if not, uh, I'll extend that message personally at some point. But again, many thanks to you. I look forward to working with you on your next chapter of community service. Excellent. Anyone else? Repeat that. No, not at all. I would just like to add, uh, same thing, Tina has countless hours into the city. Um, just about every event you're at, she's, she's here, she's working hard, uh, always has the community's best interest at heart. Uh, we appreciate her time, talent, and, ser and service that she shared with the city. Uh, we wish her some well-needed time off in between volunteer duties. But again, uh, her, t her talents will be missed at celebrations. But again, thank you, Tina. And uh, motion, please. Duke Niak moved to approve the council proclamation 18-14 to Tina Koenig for dedicated service to the city of Oak Creek as a member of the Celebrations Commission. Oracle second. Roll call. Alderman Duke Niak. Aye. Gail. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Uh, first public hearing, item 5 is a rezone for the property at 3280 East Oakwood from A1 Agriculture to RS3 Single Family. Uh, Doug, you got, or Catherine, you got to read it. Public hearing number 1 is to consider request submitted by Dale D. Witt on behalf of Laverne Boers to rezone a property, a portion of the property shown as Lot 1 on a proposed certified survey map for 3280 East Oakwood Road from A1 Limited Agricultural District to RS3 Single Family Residential with a variation request related to the minimum lot width for the proposed lot. Applicant is Dale DeWitt on behalf of Laverne Boers. Property owner is Levon Boers. 
Laverne Boers, pardon me. There follows the legal description. Date of notice is September 26, 2018. Great, Doug. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Doug Seymour. I'm the Director of Community Development for the Steeble Creek. And this is a public hearing and a request to rezone a portion of the property at 3280 East Oakwood Road from A1 Agricultural to RS3 Single Family Residential. Uh, this portion of the property uh, is identified as Lot 1 on the CSM, which the Council will be reviewing as Item 7 on this agenda. And uh, the, the proposed lot, and it's really, we really need to talk about uh, these two items in, in concert with each other, because as you'll see according to the staff report and, and the presentation this evening, that the proposed lot is about a third of an inch, third of an inch, shy of our minimum requirement for the RS3 zoning district. And there's a couple of reasons that why that might have happened, surveying standards. One of them, quite honestly, is that uh, in the time that this, this larger property was in existence and uh, subsequent land divisions of adjacent, adjacent properties, our standards for our RS3 zoning district went up from 75 to 80 feet. So that's another consideration. But essentially, uh, the, the plan calls for these part, this parcel to be single-family residential. And the code does allow for, there's a variation procedure, actually as part of the certified survey map process, that allows for the council, upon recommendation of the plan commission, to grant variations in instances such as these uh, where there's, uh, you know, there's a, there would be a detriment if there wouldn't be this kind of relief that's granted. So uh, staff felt it was entirely appropriate that uh, the property A be rezoned and B that the certified survey map, including the vari variation, be recommended for approval. The plan commission, uh, in their review of the proposal, felt the same way and have recommended their approval on both counts. Uh, you will recall that this item was before the, the uh, certainly the commission and perhaps even the council a couple of times before, uh, once initially as part of the, the night construction program. Uh, and, uh, due to some issues with the subsoil conditions, uh, that was... Uh, uh, that was withdrawn, and there's a new buyer that intends to develop that as a single-family house. So with that in mind, it is uh, certainly the commission's recommendation, as supported by staff, that the rezoning be approved from a A1 Agricultural to RS3 single-family residential for a portion of the property at 3280 East Oakwood Road. Uh, with that also in mind, it, it is a public hearing. I would ask that anyone who has any questions, comments regarding the proposal to rezone this property to fill out an appearance form, hand that in to the city clerk. And once your name is called, please uh, address, uh, proceed to the podium to address your comments and our questions. The Common Council, this public hearing is now open. Thank you, Doug. As Doug stated, we will make three calls. This will be the first call, anybody wishing to speak. This will be the second call, anybody wishing to speak on the subject. Third and final call. Anybody wishing to speak, please approach podium. We will now close the public hearing and move on to item six, which is a consideration of the ordinance to rezone the property at 3280 East Oakwood. Uh, questions, comments from council? Nobody? Only one thing. Uh, go ahead, Ken. Uh, Doug, how do we actually uh, incorporate the... Uh Appears from the staff report that the variance has to actually be granted by the council for this. Yeah, that will actually be memorialized as part of the, the resolution approving the certified survey map. Um, Got to believe we've seen this at planning. I, I yeah, well, that's way that. back in June. Um, so I really have nothing to add. Doug spelled it out pretty well. So if there's no other questions, motion. It okay, will move to approve ordinance 2918 resorting a portion of the property at 3280 East Oakwood Road from A1 Agriculture to RS3 re single family residential. Kuzikowski, <coughs> a second. Roll call. Alderman Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Aye. Item number seven is a resolution uh, considering a certified survey map for the property at 3280 East Oakwood Road. Doug? So as was stated as part of the public hearing, this is the CSM or Certified Survey Map that creates the lot at 79.97 feet wide. Uh, you'll notice as part of the resolution uh, that specifically calls out that you're creating a lot 
within the IRS three zoning district that is less than the 80 feet. Uh, unless there's any questions, uh, certainly plan commission staff recommend approval of the proposed certified survey map. Any questions? If none, motion. It, uh, all the, or, no, I just on Mike's uh, absence. I'll move to approve resolution one two zero zero three dash one one zero five one eight, approving a certified survey map for the Lavorne Brewers at the property at thirty two eighty East Oakwood Road. Grzykowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Grzykowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Gale. Aye. Uh, eight is uh, to consider a request by M and M Truck Center to rezone the properties at ninety eight forty and. 9872 South 27th Street. Catherine? Public hearing number two is to consider a request by m and <laughs> Truck Center, Inc. to rezone the properties at 9840 and 9872 South 27th Street from M-1PUD Manufacturing and OO Mixed Use Office Overlay District to M-1PUD Manufacturing. Applicant is m and Truck Center. Property owner is RD Invest, Inc. There follows the legal description. Date of notice, October 3rd, 2018. Thank you. So these two properties, and there's actually a public hearing that follows immediately after this item, which is for uh, uh, some additional properties in the same area. So these properties along South 27th Street, and as you can see by the, the exhibit, uh, and this actually is, is for the, the next item, but I'll use it to explain this one. The properties themselves are zoned M1 manufacturing. And the comprehensive plan calls for plan industrial. However, there is an office overlay district here that was put in place as part of the South 27th Street plan that, again, well, calls for, for office development. And as such, uh, uh, does not allow for some of the uses that would be permitted or, or conditional in that base zoning district of M1. The applicant in this case. Uh, is looking to reuse one of these existing industrial buildings uh, along South 27th Street. And as such, it has been working with staff to find a path to kind of get, get ourselves uh, uh, a rational way to deliberate whether or not the office overlay is still should still be in effect uh, and whether or not conditions have changed along 27th Street such that the office overlay may need to be adjusted. So... With that in mind, while it's a rezoning, and it's a little bit difficult to understand in the sense that you're not changing the industrial zoning, the base zoning is staying the same. But the request this evening and for the subsequent item is to remove that office, office overlay from these properties. It doesn't remove it entirely from 27th Street, it just adjusts the northerly boundary, the properties to the south, which include the Liberty Corporate Preserve, of which there is an office building, still will re retain that overlay. But it really is a case where some of the existing uh, manufacturing properties uh, in the South Branch Industrial Park, which have this overlay district, uh, you know, while, while the overlay district was really put in place as an incentive to redevelop that, there's some, I guess some could say that it's actually providing a disincentive to maintaining those properties and redeveloping because you really can't use those for manufacturing uses, the uses that are allowed in the base zoning district. And just anecdotally, I mean, the the thought behind having the office overlay district, I think it was a good one. Uh, that was 10 years ago. And certainly uh, the office submarket in southern Milwaukee County, and more specifically Oak Creek, is challenging and made even more so by the fact that you would be trying to convert old industrial properties to this new office uses. So I think in time, as the corridor transitions, uh, there'll still be opportunities to do that. Just that in the interim, I think it, it makes sense to encourage reinvestment in these properties, allow the property owners to utilize those in a manner consistent with the base zoning. And that is why working with staff, working with the applicant, we have uh, come up with a proposed solution, if you will, to uh, to really modify minorly the, the northerly boundary of this office or the district such that it would no longer apply to these historically industrial properties in the South Branch Industrial Park. That being said, this is a public hearing. I would invite anyone who has any questions or comments regarding the proposed rezoning and essentially taking away the office overlay district to fill out an appearance form. Once your name is called, please approach the podium uh, and present your comments. 
or questions to the Common Council, this public hearing is now open. Thank you, Doug. We will make three calls. This will be the first call. Please. I apologize. Uh, got, that, that's okay. Uh, name and address. Yeah, please. Attorney Joe Sincata. Excuse me, Joe Sincata. I'm the attorney for the applicant on this rezoning. Uh, thank you for letting me speak. I'm sorry I didn't fill out a slip. Uh, my office is at 400 East Wisconsin in Milwaukee. And I'm just here to introduce myself quickly, let you know I'm here, and Mr. Redata is here, representative of M&M Truck Center. Should you have any questions, we're, we're happy to, to respond to those. And then secondly, just to compliment uh, the staff for working on this with us. And thirdly, to say the conditional use permit process will then come after this if we're able to get an approval tonight. And I think that process will lead to a more detailed um, evaluation of what conditions to put on the ultimate development. So just to, to separate those two, the rezoning is first, and then we'll come back for the conditional use permit. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Second call. Anybody wishing to speak? Third and final call. We will now close the public hearing and move on to consideration of an ordinance to rezone those properties at 9840 and 9872 South 27th from M1 Manufacturing and OO Mixed Overlay Office District to M1 Manufacturing. Questions from the council? Go ahead, Ken. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Uh, Doug, I, I think this is before my time in terms of the adoption of the overlay district. Was it, was that a... Was that in a formal agreement with Franklin in terms of code zoning or? Well, it was a joint effort by both municipalities. There's not a co-zoning. As a matter of fact, the, the zoning codes on Franklin versus Oak Creek, they utilize a unified development ordinance. So it's not a apples to apples comparison. Okay. Uh, so there's no agreement we have to worry about breaching if we... No. Oh, yeah. The MOU is for, for certainly with the planning the... Uh, the uses along the corridor and, you know, again, to the extent that we're still retaining a, the, the bulk of that office overlay, you know, that's, uh, I believe we're remaining consistent with the intent of that. We did uh, talk about this at planning quite a bit as well and gives us an opportunity to maybe uh, re re revitalize the area a little bit. Uh, kind of what we're shooting for. Anyone else questions? Greg? Uh, yeah, just just to kind of go on what Chris said, we discussed this pretty extensively a couple of times over in planning, and the overlay district kind of overlaps what our zoning is on this industrial park. So as they come in, if they wish to revitalize this, this truck center, so to speak, it doesn't fit within the overlay. So we're still looking to keep the front boulevard of 27th looking business-like, uh, so to speak, and that could happen in conditions if I'm correct, Doug, so this is a truck repair service, so in conditions and restrictions, we can basically take care of what the front of the building looks like, and the business, the industrial business can go on in the back. And, and that would be the, the matter for a separate public hearing. This is, correct. This is just removing the office overlay? Correct. But it just, it did get rather lengthy and yep. uh, how do I say it? confusing a little bit at, at planning, because... Zoning wasn't changing, but the overlay was. Right. So that's it. So if no other questions or I didn't confuse anybody too bad, motion. Mr. Kowski, I'll make a motion to accept ordinance number 2916 uh, to rezone the properties at 9840 and 9872 South 27th Street from M1 PUD to man <coughs> manufacturing and overlay a mixed office overlay district. To M1 PUD manufacturing. Circle second. Roll call. Alderman Kurkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Our last public hearing is a rezone consideration for the properties at 2600 South Branch Boulevard and 9810 South 27th Street. Public hearing number three is to consider a request by the City of Oak Creek to rezone the properties at 2600 West South Branch Boulevard. And 9810 South 27th Street from M1 PUD Manufacturing and OO Mixed Use Office Overlay District to M1 PUD Manufacturing. Applicant, City of Oak Creek, Property Owner, White Brothers Trucking Company and Secure Mini Storage Limited Partnership, a MN 
Limited Partnership, CO Public Storage, Inc. There follows legal, the legal description. Date of notice is October 10th, 2018. Thank you. Again, this is actually an extension of the, the previous proposal in the sense that by removing the office overlay district from the properties to the south, this would have created an essence of an island or something that's separated from the rest of the office overlay district. And much like the, the old fireplace store, as, as was the subject of the last uh, rezoning uh, is concerned, this is a self-storage facility along with a, an existing, uh, it's more of a, a truck facility, White Brothers Trucking. And can the same factors apply, although there's no there's no proposal at this point in time to redevelop those properties, but staff felt and the commission felt, I, I should say, that it would have, would have been improper uh, and possibly inappropriate to retain that office overlay to the north, given the fact that, again, base zoning is industrial, comp plan shows and plan industrial, and that the same challenges would have, have been present for the redevelopment of these properties that had been present on the properties to the south in the sense that, I mean, it would have been uh, ex much more challenging to develop office uses on, on these properties than it would be on other, uh, other properties within the that office overlay district. And it is staff's recommendation, certainly the plan commission's recommendation, that these properties be rezoned. Again, removing the office overlay, keeping the, the industrial zoning after a public hearing. And given the fact that this is a public hearing, again, I would ask that anyone with any questions, comments, please approach the podium, give your name, address, proceed to address those to the Common Council. This public hearing is open. Thank you, Doug. Uh, we will make the first call. Second call. Third and final call. We'll now close the public hearing and move on to consideration of Ordinance 2917 to rezone the properties at 26 West South Branch and 8910 South 27th Street from M1 Manufacturing and Overlay Mixed Use Office Overlay District to M1. Questions, comments from the council? Now, I think Doug sum summed it up pretty well. Um, but if anybody has anything if not motion Ruzikowski makes a motion to accept ordinance number 2917 an ordinance to rezone the properties at 2600 West South Branch Boulevard and 9810 South 27th Street from M1 PUD manufacturing and OO mixed use office overlay district to M1 PUD manufacturing Oracle second roll call Alderman Lorick. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Gail. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. And item 12 brings us to our big presentation tonight from the Oak Creek High School's robotics team. So, guys, you might want to stick around for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's our spokesman tonight? Hi, I'm Maya, um, and that's Sam. Um, uh, on, on the microphone, please. Sounds good. I'm Maya. I am the captain, the business captain of Roundtable Robotics. Um, and today we're here to tell you a little bit about what we do over at the high school, because um, we are the first robotics competition team there. But first, we're going to say our core values, because that encompasses what we stand for. So guys, you ready? OK. We are one team. We seek having fun over being right. We are respectful. We work on learning. We are <laughs> we are hard. We are RTR. So that's our core values. So we said at the beginning of every meeting um, to talk about what we stand for and why we do what we do. Um, Sam is going to tell you later about the engineering aspects, like how we build, what we build, when we build it. Um, I'm going to talk about more what I do as the business captain and what we all do, because we all work on that. Um, so there's a lot of skills you can learn on the robotics team. That's why we have it. Um, we learn a lot of public speaking skills, we learn a lot of writing skills, business skills, business management skills, um, along with how to work as a team. Um, and we do that through a bunch of collaborative projects we do in the community and together. So a few projects that we wanted to touch on because they're new and pretty awesome is we started 18 FLL Junior teams this year, which is first Lego League Junior, which is robotics at an elementary school level. So we all coach a team. Um, 
We have 18 of them. It's super awesome and super great in the community, a new thing that we started. So that's something we're going to tell you about. We also have this new thing called FarmBot, which is just getting started. It's at the Hunger Task Force. It is a robot that farms and weeds and does all kinds of farming things and it makes a bunch of food. Um, and we donate that to the, like, the homeless. We donate it to the Hunger Task Force, which then donates it to under privileged senior citizens. So that's another project we do. Um, and we do a few more, but we're going to talk about the engineering because that's super cool. That's what our kids all want to do, mostly. Um, so yeah, Sam's going to talk about that. And afterwards, if you have any questions about our big projects, you can ask me about them. So like Maya said, I'm here to talk about the engineering side of things. Um, not only, so there's two parts of our season. There's the season where we compete, go to competitions, build a robot, and the off season where we do all sorts of other things. One of those is FarmBot, like Maya said. I won't recap that, but um, another thing we do is ParadeBot. We build a robot to run in the 4th of July parade. We make a new one every year. Last year, you might have seen it was a train. Anybody? <laughs> um so in the season it's a six week period where we get a new game every year and we have to design a robot from scratch and have it be able to run in competitions and compete alongside other teams against alliances of other teams uh, we go into competitions with hundreds of teams there it's really fun it's a long day but it's definitely worth it um we learn the engineering design process. We CAD things, we blueprint, we make robots out of cardboard, Frankenstein them into what we want them to look like, and then piece them all together on the computer and then make a real version. We run it and we find what's wrong. Sometimes we get mad at each other, but that's teamwork. <laughs> um, it's a lot of fun for us all and we learn a bunch. So basically what we're telling you is that at the high school, we do not just sit in classrooms, okay? We are creating thinkers and designers and leaders. We're all, how do you have this many leaders in a room? I don't know, but it, we do, okay? Every single one. I'm in a different way, though. Um, and yeah, the future, that's what they say. They say we're creating the future, and it's true. So yeah, that's us. Any questions? Yes. Uh, you know, it's, it's really unique. I had an opportunity to run a robot how do you finance the robot, and how much does an average robot cost you to build? Who are okay. your partners? So we have a lot of partners. Um, you can look at the back of my shirt to find them. I cannot list them all because there are so many. Um, we, fought, we get the finances because we go to sponsors and we present there. Um, that's where a lot of the public speaking skills come from, as well as the writing skills and I guess the teamwork and the leadership, all of it goes together. Uh, but we go and we partner with a lot of sponsorships. Our sponsors then, it's kind of like a two-way street because then they can come to all of our meetings. They can work with us. We have a lot of mentors that are like, those are like our coaches. We have a lot of mentors that are sponsors. Um, and it's a really cool way for us to see where we're headed because a lot of our sponsors are like engineering companies and a lot of us want to be engineers. So we get to see like what that looks like when we grow up. Um, and our robot has a price limit. So a lot of our funding goes towards other things such as competitions and buying materials but our, and other robots, but our actual robot has a price limit. Do you know what that is? $4,000. <laughs> um, yeah, but typically our budget that we gain through our sponsorship is about thirty or 40000 a year, depending on our plans. Good questions. Where do you travel to? Well, we travel to all kinds of places. This year are two competitions. There's one in Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Regional. You all can come. It's super awesome. See what we're doing. Um, that's in March. And then there's also, we're going to the Duluth Regional um, this year in Minnesota. And then there is the World Championship that we have been lucky enough to go to for the last three years? Two years. Ugh. Okay, the last two years, um, it's in Detroit. Yes, it was in St. Louis the first year, and now it's in Detroit the rest of them questions but, what was your title again round table robotics no you're you're me you're, i'm okay it's called the chief of operations officer which means the business captain i think you picked the right person for that <laughs> uh, you know if you were selling cars i would buy one of those too you're just awesome you I, um i just i'm just you don't get somebody with that much energy 
to stand up and describe what you, what you do so well. Um, you said you have a farm bot. Yes. Takes care of weeds and gardens and things. It does. Can I borrow it? <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, you know, if you would just turn around again. If you look on the back, we have some local companies in there. We have Zoomed, who's coming to us very soon. Uh, PPG, I see Masterlock on there. It looks like our Lions Club. Nucor. Nucor, I can't, can't see yes, them all. Yaskawa. So, um, yeah. Yep, Yaskawa. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Laddish is on there from our neighbors in Cudahy, So, and Rockwell Automation. And, of course, many of you may wind up there some, some sometime in the future. So... Uh, this is really great to have the hands-on, the engineering, the mix, and then yet the business sense to go with this. This, this is incredible. I, I do see these students out there fundraising. They're out there helping at the farmer's market, various things. Um, we're having a turkey trek here on Thanksgiving morning. You guys can come out. Maybe your road, ro robot can help load up the trucks. It's a food drive. So, yeah, I thank you guys for coming out. If you have not seen the robot, it's pretty fascinating. Now, this one, they told me, gets taken apart, reused for parts, correct? And they'll begin a new project here in January. They have approximately six or eight weeks to build a new one. Six. Six, to design and build a new one to go into the competitions they spoke of. So you, do you have to win the regionals or place in the regionals to get to that? To Worlds? to the world's yeah the world championship there's a few ways you can get it first you can win first at the regionals or you can win a few different awards um that can get you there that's like what the um a lot of the business side is is writing for those awards last year that's how we got there through the engineering inspiration award and through that award um it was all about like the projects we started and the business we run and nasa actually paid for our entrance into the world championship that year so that was super awesome uh, but yeah, that's that's how you get there. You win the competition, or you win the awards, or there's also like a fun, like random draw where you can get picked. That's how we got there one time. So, yeah. Great. So, just a quick commercial because we do stream this online, and there could be a business owner out there looking to get involved, uh, or just maybe a citizen that would like to donate. How do they reach the robotics team? Roundtayrobotics at gmail.com. Email me and I'll answer. And then you can talk to me. And it'll be fun. <laughs> and then our website is roundtayrobotics.com, which is also a great contact source. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. I agree. A lot of energy there. <laughs> Oh, a new business. Item 13 is informational. It's the summarized treasurer's report. Um, I know Barb is a little under the weather. Um, any questions concerning it? If there are, maybe Bridget could step in. Guess we got none on the informational. So. Uh, Best we can do is really just kind of read the packet. But like I say, if you got questions, maybe Bridget or Andrew can go over it. <coughs> All right, seeing none, we'll move on to 14. Uh, discussion, direction of city staff regarding the schedule for 2019 regular combined common council meeting date. Uh, this is something we do regularly. Uh, it usually concerns the holidays of the 4th of July, Christmas and New Year's, I believe. Am I correct in that, Catherine? Yes. 4th of July. Right. Uh, would you like to comment on it? No, I think the discussion um, is like it's uh, for the past pre couple years, I think we've talked about the first Tuesday in July falls on July 2nd, and um, whether or not the council would like to consider vacating that meeting. Um, and then looking at December 18th, um, whether or not that week, the holiday week. So I don't know if anyone has a preference. Or... Ideas, guys? Um, obviously, January, we did that last year. Uh, we definitely are not going to be prepared to come back in the second and, or, or the first and have that meeting. So I, I would move to vacate that along with the July meeting of the readings from the, the reading, reading material. Uh, does anybody else have any questions or comments? I have just a few. Uh, I'll make it 
short. But one thing I was going to ask about is if we had any more discussion on having the start time for the council meetings moved up to an earlier time start um, from 7 o'clock to uh, 6 o'clock. And then in addition to that, could we possibly add our targeted budget dates for next fall on there? Um, we do. Uh, Melissa's saying in November they have the formal on the eight, yes. on the eighteenth. Put the workshops. Put the workshops. I yeah. I already have the wedding, so it's not going to be around. <laughs> That's in my twenty twenty budget yeah, folder in the, already. <laughs> in general, like just as a kind of regular. Mm -hmm. Uh, regarding the start times, no, I don't think we've we'd have to bring that up on another planning discussion. Um, so I know you brought it up, but it's, it could come back around for discussion. All right. Um, so I guess well, no. I guess if nobody balance. has any heartburns, we can consider this oh, template for next week. You okay with that, Ken? Okay, Greg? So Mayor, you were saying that uh, we were not going to have a meeting on uh, January 2nd? It would be the January meeting would be suspended. Okay. Uh, the first one in January. And also the first in July, am I correct in that? The second. Correct. Okay, so then the direction of council would be to vacate um, the January 1st, or uh, pardon me, the January 2nd and July 2nd meeting. Right? Yes. Correct. Okay. Yes, as written. Holiday. All good? Okay. I think that direction is fairly clear. Uh, item 15 is a resolution designating the official holidays for 2019. If you'd all please take a look. Any questions, concerns? If not, motion. I'll move to approve resolution 12000-110518 designated official holidays for 2019. Mr. second. Roll call. Alderman Dukniak. Aye. Gail. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. Item 16 is consideration of a resolution approving a certified survey map. Mm -hmm. For the properties at 7266 and 7328 South Howell Avenue. Thank you. Uh, the applicant MVAH Housing Partners is requesting com to combine these two properties, the properties at 7266 and 7328 South Howell Avenue, into one conforming lot. The parcels are zoned RS3 at the present time. Uh, the proposed lot would conform to the RS3 zone district, but perhaps more importantly, it would also conform to the RM1 zoning district, which would be the appropriate zoning for the applicant to pursue uh, should the CSM be approved. And at a later date, they'd be coming forward with a proposal to develop that property uh, for multifamily housing. This CSM does <coughs> not, uh, it is what it is. It's combining these properties. It's not making any judgments with respect to any rezoning with any conditional use. It merely acknowledges that the two combined properties uh, meet the minimum law requirements <clears throat> of the RS3 zoning district. Uh, the rest would be coming through an, under a separate process. Uh, uh, we have made some notations there with respect to some some issues that we see forthcoming with respect to density. And I know the applicant is working through some of those issues. But the fact is that the proposed CSM combining the two lots into one is in conformance with the requirements for the RS3 zoning district. Uh, the staff recommends, therefore, the approval of the CSM, as does the Planning Commission. Thank you, Doug. Uh, questions? Mayor Dan, I, I, I have one. I know there was uh, quite a bit of discussion about this item at our last council meeting, and there was a recommendation by the 
Planning Commission not to approve. So can I ask what had, what changed? Were there obviously some of the terms conditions? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. If, if you recall, and that that recommendation was, was, was with respect changed. to the the comprehensive land use, the future land use map. And as you recall, uh, when this item came before the Common Council, uh, an acknowledgement of the concerns of the Planning Commission, the Common Council did actually change the future land use map to mixed residential. Uh, the Planning Commission, uh, with respect to the CSM, they acknowledge that it meets the requirements of not only, again, the RS3, but the RM1 as well. And so, uh, and thus, Chris, was, was there any discussion about the, the CSM itself? I mean, there was no objection to the CSM. And, and Chris, I think you misunderstood what my question was, um, because now the, the, the Planning Commission is, is making the recommendation for the approval. At last meeting, they did not. There's two separate... Yeah, two separate actions. Oh, okay. The, the comp plan was the the first item they didn't want to change. They wanted to do, if you recall, there was the, the properties we're talking about. If you look at what's on the screen in the sh shaded ash marks, excuse me, um, they wanted to include that other triangle. Ah, okay. My apologies. And uh, we were only concerned about those properties. And in a future time, uh, those properties to the north could okay. be. Oh, no, I want to make sure you got it right, for sure. Uh, any other questions? No? Uh, motion. Rakowski will make a motion to council adopt resolution number 12001-110518, a resolution approving a certified survey map for whom on MVAH partners for the properties at 7266 and 7328 South Howell Avenue. Oracle second. Roll call. Alderman Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. No. Kirkowski. Aye. Florek. Aye. Dubniak. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Uh, item 17 in engineering consideration of a resolution accepting the workmanship of Super Excavators Inc. authorizing final payment. Mike. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is the. Um, Construction project that was uh, completed and uh, wrapped up finally in the, in the spring of this year. It is the uh, water main project that uh, spanned uh, from the north end of IKEA uh, Drive um, a little bit further north, and then uh, taking a quick uh, left turn uh, to to the west and kind of connecting in at 27th Street and NML Way. And this follows the alignment of the uh, future roadway that will be constructed one day as that uh, land, those adjacent lands develop. Any questions? One, go ahead. Mike, is that right that it's uh, funding is out of CIP on this project? This is, um, this is, this is TIF funded, correct, uh, Bridget? We have, do we have a typo in here? Oh, okay. Yeah. Apologize for that. It is coming out too. Any other questions? None. Motion. York moves that the council approve resolution number 11997-110518, accepting the workmanship of Super Excavators, Inc., and authorizing final payment for project number 15023. Dukniak, second. Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Gale. Aye. Item 18 is consideration of a resolution approving a stormwater management practice maintenance agreement with Walden OC <coughs> LLC for the Creekside Crossing Marketplace development. Mike? This is uh, the properties that um, are located along the north side of Drexel Avenue between the interstate and um, Ikea Way. Uh, so it's the lands that were formerly residential and south of, lying south of the uh, Ikea store. Um, so there are conceptual uh, plans being considered on, on that property, and of course they will need to have uh, stormwater management 
And so this is, is really taking care of that requirement that they have a stormwater management maintenance agreement. Questions for Mike, go ahead. Mike, just to, uh, Alderman Kirkowski, just out of curiosity, how, how does this stormwater management plan get affected by that one loan house that still sits there? I, um, because you never had something like this before. It, right, yes. Um, they will develop, um, as it stands today, they will develop around that property. Okay, so, thank you. Go ahead, Greg. A quick question. Um, and this may be future, but is the water management plan accounting for that land, or are they just required to account for the stormwater on the land that they have acquired? Uh, this would just be on the land that, that, that they own and are developing. So okay. is the question, does it include would, the, the, the resident? So that piece, if it's developed, would need its own stormwater management plan? That, that's correct. Okay. Any other questions for Mike? If none, motion. Clerk moves that the council adopt resolution number 11998-110518. A resolution approving a stormwater management practices maintenance agreement with Walden OC LLC for their Creekside Crossing Marketplace development located on the northeast corner of West Drexel Avenue and South Ikea Way. Niak second. Roll call. Alderman Kirkowski. Aye. Florek. Aye. Duke Niak. Aye. Gail. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Item 19 is consideration of a resolution to establish stormwater management service charges for the city of Oak Creek. Mike. And as the council is, is well aware, we, we uh, review this uh, stormwater uh, fund every year uh, during the budget cycle. Uh, this year was no different. As the city uh, continues to, to develop, we have more streets, we have more uh, stormwater uh, infrastructure uh, to maintain. And so we, we monitor this fee uh, closely, evaluate it to see if we are uh, if we're covered, if we're going to be able to take care of the, the requirements that the permit uh, tells us we must uh, uh, cover. And so um, this year uh, we had proposed a $2 increase uh, per, per uh, ERU, the equivalent runoff unit. And um, finance has put together a... Uh, Kind of a, 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 an ongoing analysis, uh, so we have a forecast of what the needs may be, uh, at least for the next you know four four or five years. But this year the proposal is two dollar increase from thirty five dollars to thirty seven dollars. Questions for Mike? Comments? Mike, just for uh, public edification, uh, um, ERU uh, typically single single family home is a single ERU, correct? So that's a two dollar impact. <clears throat> Per year for per single family home. Yes. Else, um, I'd just like to add this cost helps cover sweep street sweeping, catch basin cleaning, uh, stormwater management facility inspections, uh, things such as equipment used for stormwater related functions such as mowers, street sweepers, backhoes, replacements, maintenance of those things. So it's not just. Uh, urban gutter stuff on development too. It covers a wide wide variety of things that go into keeping the city um, stormwater managed. No other questions or comments? Motion. It will move to approve resolution 11999-11051 a resolution to establish stormwater management services charges for the city of Oak Creek. Mr. Kowski, a second. Roll call. Alderman Lorick. Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Gale? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Uh, item 20 is the license committee. I'd like to turn that over to Alderman Kurkowski. Thank you, Mayor. I hope that everybody has had time to review the Common Council report regarding the items for the license committee report. Are there any questions? Okay, seeing none. Kurkowski will make a motion to adopt the license committee recommendations as listed on the November 5th, 2018 license committee report. Yeah, second. Roll call. 
Alderman Dukniak. Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Florick? Aye. Item 21 is approval of our vendor summary report. Uh, questions go to Bridget or Mike. <laughs> if they're engineering related, I guess. Any questions? If not, motion. Gail moved to approve the October 30, 2018 vendor summary report in the combined total amount of $367,857.86. Kuzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lorik? Aye. Duke Aye. Aye. Item 22 is to consider a motion to convene into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin state statutes to discuss the following. A, section 19.85, parent 1, parent E, consider a proposed finance development agreement with Lakeshore Veterinary Real Estate, Oak Creek, LLC, for the development of the property at 9430 and 9472 South 27th Street. Tax key numbers 878. Dash nine thousand dash zero zero one and eight seven eight dash nine 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 five dash zero zero zero. B section nineteen point eight five parent one parent E to consider a proposed finance development agreement for the property being developed by Ryan Business Park LLC consisting of approximately seventy five acres located at ninety six hundred, ninety seven hundred, and ninety nine hundred South Thirteenth Street and 741 West Ryan Road. President Gale. Thank you, Mayor. Gale will move to convene in the closed session pursuant to the statutes to discuss the following. A, section 19.85, sub 1, sub E, to consider a proposed finance development agreement with Lakeshore Veterinary Real Estate Oak Creek LLC for the development of the property at 9430 and 9472 South 27th Street. And B, section 19.85, sub 1, sub E, to consider a proposed finance development agreement for property being developed by Ryan Business Park LLC consisting of approximately 75 acres located at 9600, 9700, and 9900 South 13th Street and 741 West Ryan Road. Kuzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. <clears throat> Alderman Kuzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Lorik? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Gale? Aye. We'll now convene into closed session and return at its conclusion. Kuzikowski? Aye. Lorik? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Brings us to item 24, consideration of a resolution approving and authorizing execution of a financial development agreement by and between the City of Oak Creek and Lakeshore Veterinary Real Estate, Oak Creek, LLC. Any questions, discussion, or none? Motion. We'll move to approve resolution 12002-110518, a resolution approving and authorizing execution of a finance development agreement by and between the City of Oak Creek and Lakeshore Veterinary Real Estate, Oak Creek, LLC. Who's the call? Scale second. Roll call. Alderman and Lorik. Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Excellent. Before we adjourn, I'd like to remind everybody tomorrow is election day. The polls open at 7 a.m. and they're open till 8, Catherine? Correct. So please get out there, exercise your right to vote. Uh, you can go to our website and find out all the locations for your districts. Um, also, this Saturday, we are celebrating Veterans Day at 8 a.m. at Station 3 up on 6th and Rawson. 9 a.m., sorry. I would have been there way earlier. <laughs> but anyways, get out there, honor our veterans. Uh, everybody that was honored at Town at Town Square will receive their flag at this ceremony, so please get out there. Our VFW will be there. There'll be refreshments for all. Uh, with that, adjournment. Kirkowski will make a motion to adjourn. Lorical second. Roll call. Alderman Dukniak. Aye. Gail. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. Great. Thank you and good night. <laughs>